It's been noted in early clinical trials that ibrutinib is associated with about a 50% risk of increased bruising, petechiae, ecchymosis, low-grade bleeding, as well as a several percent risk of major hemorrhage. This has been thought to be due to the effect of BTK and TEC in platelet aggregation induced by collagen. Because of this, we sought to further clarify this risk by looking at the results of four randomized trials, as well as a broader experience uh, with the brutinib in B-cell malignancies. The four randomized trials included three CLL trials, as well as a mantle cell lymphoma trial. So this was a large data set. The randomized trials included about 750 abrutinib-treated patients versus 750 comparator patients, and then a larger abrutinib pool. We did find that there was some increased risk of major hemorrhage with abrutinib. However, if you adjusted this for the duration of exposure with abrutinib, the risk was fairly comparable among the abrutinib-treated patients compared to the controls. It turned out that there is, has been reported in the literature, in fact, an increased risk of bleeding in patients with CLL and with mantle cell lymphoma independent of therapy, which was evident in the control arm of the trial as well. In multivariable analysis, predictors of the risk of bleeding included receiving an anticoagulant or antiplatelet agent, as well as having mantle cell lymphoma. Abrutinib actually didn't turn out to be a significant predictor in that analysis. The other interesting observation was that the increased risk of bleeding associated with anticoagulants or antiplatelet agents seemed to be similar amongst the patients treated with abrutinib and those without, suggesting that there was no particular synergy between abrutinib and the anticoagulant or antiplatelet agents.